So if you just drop those two bolts, it's way easier to just leave that thing in there. You don't have to mess with that one bolt you have to replace if you remove the entire assembly. So this is kind of a lazy way to do it. Undo your two bolts, one here, one there, and then yank your steering column right out, leave the bottom half in there, and replace the sensor when it's in the car. So some of you might be puzzled when you get this kit from GM. Here's your uh, sensor, and then this is an alignment tool so that you get it uh, about as perpendicular to the uh, shaft so that you don't have like a, an angled pressure on the bearings to help that guy last longer. But then, look at that. An automotive design engineer decided to make a felt washer or cotton or basically some type of supposed automotive grade felt and cotton. So you're probably wondering, why would an automotive engineer decide to do something that is uh, kind of ridiculous? Basically, this is called a tampon for um, the car. So I'm going to show you why this tampon, and uh, well, it's also an air filter too, for dust to help preventing it from getting into the sensor, but it's also a tampon, which is why it's felt. So up here, when you look at the steering shaft where it slides, the sensor is all the way down in the back. Now, here's the thing. You see all this grease? There's usually grease on these shafts. And what happens is, grease is effectively a soap or some type of other medium that they um, basically super saturate with some grade of oil. What can happen is the grease and the oil can separate over time, especially with heat. The excess oil would then fly, it would flow down the shaft and get inside of the sensor messing up your steering angle sensor. So what they did was, the engineer did a felt tampon that you stick down in there to catch any fluids that might leak down where they shouldn't belong. Kind of interesting, huh? So there's your automotive grade uh, what, what I call the tampon, as you can see, it just sits at the bottom, it never touches this guy, so it's obviously not stopping dust. So this is for when oil and grease uh, might let its oil go down the shaft, the tampon will catch it, rather than it going over the hump back here and then into the sensor and damaging its life. Near to your wheel, before you took the whole thing apart, that red dot should line up perfectly on the shaft when you seat it. The new one, of course. When you use the installation tool from the kit, that black piece should be sitting flush right here. Then you know you're properly seated. So I, I gotta say, it did take a lot of force, a lot more than I would have, to get that thing fully seated using that tool. So if you're gonna do this project, do yourself a favor and get yourself a set of really big snap rings, uh, pliers, because it's the biggest snap ring I've ever seen in an automotive application for this to get that tube off the uh, lower part of the steering to get to the sensor. You can weasel it out with screwdrivers, but good luck getting it back in. So just do yourself a favor, buy a big set of uh, specialty snap ring pli pliers and uh, leave the lower half in the car. Now the other thing I want to point out too, what happened to me on this one. <clears throat> so I went to a car wash when the inside of my interior is about 2 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. And uh, the engine wasn't even warmed up yet. I just wanted to get my windows cleaned off. So what happened was all the hot humid air came into the vehicle and condensed all over everything, like practically water droplets dripping down the windows too. So everywhere that is a module that is not sealed that has electronics, that moisture is going to get into. The two degree surfaces are going to have the hot humid air condense on it. And then uh, when I came out of the grocery store, which is at the other end of the parking lot, that's when my electric power steering stopped working. All this uh, black dirt there, obviously if it gets moist, there's going to be dirt down here too, or carbon runoff, mill, whatever you want to call it, got scraped off and the dust collects. That gets moist. When the wiper comes around, it all collects on the wiper, and then your signal just goes terribly bad. So that's why after I went through the car wash and that condensation got over everything, this guy just went on a fritz, and that was the end of it, and then I had intermittent operation after so always put your car in recirc mode before going through car washes in the winter time when the inside is really cold. Here's the bottom layer of the sensor. Of course there's uh, way more brushes, way more carbon tracks. 
And if you even look at we're up here around the plastic, over time, that carbon, also dirt, dust, etc., will get in there. And you can see here, it, you c maybe can or can't see it, but the surfaces, some are not consistent. I can see it. Uh, some of them are just completely polished. If you look at the tips, you can see something it looks like just, I don't know, something's built up on a couple of them. So I would expect that this would do exactly what it was doing, giving a uh, signal that wasn't exactly uh, consistent, causing my steering wheel to kick back and forth in the noise factor. So once again, we'll take a look here. I'll try to get a focus. Interesting on some of these tracks. But once again, you can see the, yeah, that's this dust the wipers have been scraping off for all the years. This is why everyone switched over to uh, magnetic designs, magnetic pickups. So they should, these should fail.